Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. It's uh, September 7th, 10 a.m. District courtroom, district court courtroom number one. I'm never going to be able to say this correctly. Literally, the fact that it's district court courtroom, that's going to fuck me up every time. Because my brain's going to go, you already said court. Why are you saying it again? Because I'm saying court again for the courtroom. It could just, it, why, why can't it just be the district courtroom number one? I. <laughs> anyway. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Faye. Holy shit, look at this dude. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't stand a chance. Where did we get this guy? Holy hell. Oh, what does he sound like? I have no idea. Is he snooty? Maybe he's wearing like look at his fucking what, what is this necktie thing like I've seen this before I have no idea what the fuck to call it. I don't know. He seems pretty calm The prosecution is ready your honor The, the defense is ready your honor <sighs> Miles Edgeworth I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Bro, look at him. He looks like he has no idea. He, he was like, where am I? Have you never been in court before, guy? Like, surely you do this all the time. Though, I don't know. Do you really call detectives as witnesses? This seems kind of weird, but I, I, don't, I don't know. He <laughs> doesn't even call him by his name. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. This is useful. Body was found by the window here. And the cause of death. Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. Why is he... <laughs> He's so... Gumshoe's so fucking weird. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. <laughs> That's so fucked up. That is so fu- What do you mean, even in a girl's hands? Come on. You think- you think women don't kill people? It happens all the time. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> The court accepts the statue as evidence. You're still calling it a statue? Floor plans added to the court record. That's a good point. They don't know it's a clock. Now, detective. I I yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Oh, here's the testimony. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. <laughs> Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. <laughs> Whoosh. Smack. What the fuck? Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like, what the fuck is happening? Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up an event and says something wrong. 
worked lots of times. <laughs> I shouldn't have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. I was going to start pressing people on everything anyway, because it sounds fun. Um, and I've learned that there's no repercussion for doing so. So why the fuck wouldn't I? Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Cross-examination. IFA's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Hold it! <laughs> who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gateway Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay. I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. If there's no harm, why not? There were two people there already. Hold on. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? This is a very good question, actually, because a lot of things could change. Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three, three minutes? What the fuck? I'm sorry. No, hold on. I was shitting on Gumshoe, and I still am, because he has the wrong person, obviously. This guy has to be commended for that. You're telling me he arrived at the crime scene in three fucking minutes? 180 seconds. That is insanely fast. Did he fucking teleport? Hello? That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yeah, yeah. Are you absolutely sure it was us? <laughs> what if it was a phantom, a ghost, a doppelganger? What if it was someone else dressed up to look like me? I don't remember you being there. Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, it you stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. Why, I, why not? Who cares? Why is that? What's your reason? Oh, to immediately arresting Maya. Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? D did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? This May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. <laughs> the fuck? Bro. I was about to say, if there's one thing about her that is sure, it's that she is pink. This bitch only wears pink. Well, I, I guess she is pink. <sighs> That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Uh, um... <clears throat> I guess pressing can have its advantage. Advantages, plural. Yes. Ah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony. Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. It's still ridiculous. No, it's not. This is not just because she wrote Maya's name doesn't mean Maya was the killer. Oh my god. <laughs> so dumb. Mm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? 
Uh, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Okay, well, I don't think he said any contradictions. We're just gonna keep... Like, we don't really have a lot here to press with, right? Or, well, not press with, but, like, to present. The wiretap is gonna fucking blow up. Like, I would lead with this. Like, when... <laughs> this is insane. Hold on. Like, this is so big, but whatever. I get we gotta do the whole, you know... Wait, what is this? Oh, the floor plans. Okay, and I can look at it at any time. Oh, interesting. They even show the, like, LOS angles for here, so I bet the killer could have hidden anywhere else in the room. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so after securing the suspect, I examined the scene with my own eyes. And did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. Found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. <laughs> then who did write it, smarty pants? Who? Um, I did! <laughs> I wrote it! Uh, I, I don't have to answer that. That's not my job. I'm not the detective guy, like... Well, you know what? I bet Miss May wrote it. Well, it could have been the witness, Miss May. Oh shit. Hold on. The witness was in her hotel room, not the office. Try pulling the other leg, Mr. Wright. Holy shit. Yeah, and while you're at it, pull mine too. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, detective, tell us what was written on the memo you found. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. No! I needed to press that! Go back, go back. Thank you. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal! Uh oh, he sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. What kind of tests were these again? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't believe in this new age fangled DNA shit. <laughs> huh? What kind? Uh, well, I hear they take the uh, little bits in the blood, the uh, hemo, hemo, uh, hermo goblins, hobo, er, uh, herma goblin bobbin. And I, I refuse to testify on this matter, pal. That's that's fair. I do, you should not expect him to be able to explain how the fuck the blood test works. He's not the scientist. Like, he's not going to know all the intricacies, and he'll probably fuck something up if he tries to tell it. I'm no expert on blood tests. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. <laughs> Thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Yeah. I look forward to your next evaluation, as should you. Oh. That was a mess. Right! Where was I? Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm, she was right-handed. <laughs> nice try! Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Uh, sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess. I haven't heard of many cases. No. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Objection. Stop right there. Oh, shit. 
shit, yo! <laughs> the witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. I mean, he's kind of right. It doesn't matter what Mr. Gumshoe thinks, if it's weird or not. The, the facts are the fact. He's got a point. He's technically correct. Order, order. That didn't go so well. That's right, what he said. That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Oh, I actually do have to find the contradiction. Okay, so I'm gonna actually pay attention now. Um, Secured it with his own eyes. So, oh, I didn't mean to press again. I meant to press tab, that's my bad. We'll, we'll just skip through this real quick. So I wanted to look at what we have to present. I don't think the glass shards are relevant. The autopsy, maybe the cell phone? It's gotta be something with the note here, right? Like, it's it's gotta be something along these lines. Apartment store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. Murder weapon, the wiretap, and then the actual scene of the crime. Is there something in the cell phone conversation? I guess there there is Mia telling Maya she wants her to hold the evidence. Which that seems like that'd be pretty relevant and that it would be in the thinker. But is that relevant now? I don't actually know. Found a memo. Word Maya written in blood. It was the victim's. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. I have to present something here. <sighs> um, I don't feel confident in this, but... This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence of the statement is now related? <laughs> they aren't, are they? <laughs> Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. Ah, oh, fuck! I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Hmm. I feel so stupid right now, missing something. Let me, let me just start at the beginning. After securing the suspect, he examined the scene of the crime with his own eyes. Yes, this is true. He found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Yes, it's the department store receipt. Yeah, it is, this checks out. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. It is indeed. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's, yes. There was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Um... Why are the glass shards important? That's what I'm wondering. Thinker... Do I just present the receipt? This doesn't seem right. Hmm... Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It, it does? I don't see anything contradictory. Huh? Really? Objection overruled. Ah, fuck. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Whoops, that didn't go so well. Oh, I'm losing it. Where she died. Let me look at the, the press for this again. Get a lot of cases where they write the name, but then, yeah, okay. What am I missing here? I do love his animations. They're pretty great. <laughs> order, order, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Hmm. Death was instantaneous! Oh, that's what I'm missing! The autopsy report! Death was instant- She couldn't have written the killer's name in blood if she died instantly! Oh my god, finally! Holy shit, I need to read the evidence more clearly. Oh, whoops. I didn't- I, I clicked one too many times. Oh, and it, it put me right back at the beginning, huh? Uh, victim's blood. There we go. It's impossible! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying? 
What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. It only took them four different attempts of putting useless information in front of me before they got there. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Objection. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Oh, fuck, he's gonna legal trick me. Uh-oh. Um, when? It was the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be like a you obtained this uh, improperly or something, but no. That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. <laughs> the bell! That is all. I love this guy, he's great. I see. God damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham! <laughs> I'm a sham! <laughs> you know what, the detective's a sham. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham! How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I thought... Detective Gumshoe... Uh. I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Uh, I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? But... <sighs> your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Okay, well, we got fucking nowhere with this, then. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take this. Oh my god, I just now got that her name is April May, like the order of the fucking months, dude. Literally, like, January, February, March, April, May. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm back, I'm back, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> exactly what part of her is innocent? Oh god. <laughs> They're gonna play this music? This is the music we play. Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> I'm not gonna say wink. Man, can you please stand normally? Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th, when the murder occurred? Um, she... I was, like, in my hotel room? Teehee? I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay & Co. law offices. Hmm... That's right, big boy. Oh my god! Please testify to the court about what you saw. In a normal manner. You fucking freak. It was, like, 
Nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy wincy. Every little bitsy wincy. Wink. Oh my god. Hmm. Well, your honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. It's all bullshit! I can go up on the on the stand and say whatever the fuck I want. That doesn't mean it's solid proof. I can literally just make shit up. Like... I don't see a need to trouble the witness any... Wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite... firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes! I, I always have a right to cross-examine! That's not... In <laughs> I am the one who chooses whether or not I need to. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. We're gonna press everything. Hold on! Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well... Um, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. But yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. Oh, Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You're insist you insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him! The poor girl! <laughs> Order! Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? What do you mean these trivial questions? That's a bit, I think that's a reasonable question. Anyway. The woman with long hair, that was Miss Mia Fey. Uh-huh, slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. Jesus! Your thing? And the person attacking her. When attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, your honor. He's right. Um... I question the testimony. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... You're lying! Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. Uh, about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh, true, she's wearing the kimono. 
No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. Jesus, Phoenix. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, but. Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. We do. I saw her. We pulled Gumshoe back up. He saw her. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? <laughs> what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? She actually yeah, fucking yowled at him. What the fuck? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I mean, I don't know if we really... Okay, we're, we're back to new testimony then. I did see everything, I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock? The, the thinker, I think? How do you know it's a clock? How the fuck do you know that's a clock, huh? Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> I see. Only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Bro, the judge is so fucking based. He is not dealing with this bullshit, and I love it. Please begin the cross-examination. Now, hold on a second here. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight to, uh, with that weapon, that clock. How do you know it's a clock? A clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. Okay, well, hear me out. I'm pretty confident in this. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Re revealing Oh, you like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. You just said this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh. Another person in the much same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, uh. Objection. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. That's a shitty objection, Edgeworth. I expected better from you. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes. Yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Ms. Wright. What the fuck? Hold on a minute. No, that's a very valid point. Objection. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue the question to witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? Wh what? Th that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fay & Co. No. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law office of Fay & Co., where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. <laughs> or no, it couldn't have rung. 
Yeah, because the batteries were taken out. And we have proof of that from the phone call. Oh, we're on a roll now. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Or I guess she didn't just take the batteries out, she took all of it out. How could you possibly... Just take a look, right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have run. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> fat. Well, Miss May. Oh shit, he's in the tank. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. No, I have proof that... No, oh, Edgeworth, you fool! You buffoon! I'm about to expose you in front of all these people! Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is this cell phone, baby. Take that. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not expect that line. I don't read these before I start saying them. I just dive into it and just fucking go for it, so. <laughs> That's a very cute cell phone. Oh, you have a girly phone. What the fu What's wrong with that, April? What's wrong with that, Miss May? Maybe Phoenix has a pink cell phone. Is there anything fucking wrong with that? I'm sorry, I don't see an issue. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Oh, he's losing it! Holy shit! Edgeworth, are you okay, my guy? Oh my lord. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? <sighs> the detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Yeah, I kinda am too, but he fucked up royally. All right, like he really fucked up here. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. A full 12 or 11 and a half hours before the murder. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? W well Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I go to so many. Whoops, I forgot. 
so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Judge, now hold on. You've been so good to me. You were literally at the trial with me when Larry Butts testified that he, wait, no, did he testify that he made the clock? I don't remember. He might not have. That might have been after the trial. I don't know. Judge, you might be cutting, I might be cutting you some slack here. I don't know. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, I do. There's only two of these clocks in existence. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. The clock? Because it was made by Larry Butts? It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible, everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo. Mm. Oh, excuse is not on sale today. He's a killer. Phoenix, she's already dead. You gotta stop, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? Jesus. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Uh-oh? Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. S -s -s silly me. And did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee <laughs> Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? <laughs> what a good face. Hmm. Oh, dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Did she hold it? Hmm, I don't think she ever held it. I think she had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. Yeah, holding it wouldn't tell you it's a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Ah. Uh, erm. Um. The wiretap, of course. Now it's, it, it, this is such a damning piece of evidence. Like the moment you bring up the wiretap that you had wiretapped her room, you're fucked. Like what, what on earth? Edgeworth, what are you gonna do about this shit, my guy? Like, have a look at this. Ah, oh, that. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Maya Faye's cell phone, or well, her phone, not her cell phone. Her phone, were you not? Oh, ooh. Uh, good luck, buddy. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. How? How? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. I want to see Edgeworth's little health bar go down. Mine went down when I fucked up. I want to see his go down. Fuck him. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. 
Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the, the cell phone. We have the recording, right? Like, like literally right here. Again, what is the time, is it? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue, the thinker, right? Like, I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your honor, this is ridiculous. I expected so much more from you, Mr. Edgeworth. Everyone's talking up so much smack. So B M Miles Edgeworth, the best lawyer in the fucking world or whatever. And the best objections you've got is this is ridiculous. Come on, dude. Your honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Uh, uh, uh. Witness answered the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. <clears throat> okay, well, congratulations. Now you're being held for contempt of court. Congrats. Now you are under criminal investigation for contempt of court. Have fun. You've got your own trial coming up. You want Edgeworth to represent you? Too bad. It's not fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, <laughs> that did it. Court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Uh, I don't think she did it. I, I mean, also, I know she didn't do it. We saw that guy do it. So why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't Tiffany tapping er, irrelevant? God, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. Hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. What do you mean? <laughs> well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who spot that. And, of course, I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say. Way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. I ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not at the was not on the scene at the time of the murder. Nobody said she was. What? <laughs> Yeah, we know she was in her room. Like, so where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. 
There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Hmm. Will calling the bellboy as a witness really help? I don't know how much more we'll get. I, I imagine if we keep examining Miss May, we might be able to get her to slip up. I just don't think the bellboy can really... Yeah, fuck it. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, no! Absolutely not! Fuck you! Then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer. Thus, she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Give up? No, we don't give up. Sure. All right, I've got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. What the fuck does that mean? Okay, well, he brought the tea and, and cookies with him? Like, what? Why did he bring these to the court? Can I have some? I'm a little peckish. <laughs> okay, like... <laughs> yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea suck looks rather heavy, so without further ado... The witness may begin his testimony. Can, can we not have him just set it down? He has to hold it the whole time? Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gate Water Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Um. Now, hold on a second. How did you see the crime that com that was committed at 9 o'clock when you were getting your iced coffee precisely at 9 o'clock? I'm just saying. R right, I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, why will be finished? I mean, I'm gonna press everything because it's fun, but... Oh, I have to wait for him to finish his lines. What exactly is it that you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir. I check in guests, I check out guests. I clean rooms, I make beds, I even deliver room service, sir. I checked Miss May in personally. Are you always so... prim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking frivolous questions. That is pretty frivolous. <laughs> Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... <coughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yeah, I'm sure you did, you freak! Yes, what that? She asked for an iced coffee and brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot. 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She 
She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. I brought it up through precisely at the time requested, of course. Precisely nine o'clock, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. Nine o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, Tiki, I'd like, like, iced coffee at exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. Okay, well, so hear me out. Well, which do I use? She asked for the coffee. I guess her asking the coffee isn't the same as it being brought to her. So we probably want to present on this. The Where's the time of death? Hold on. Uh, I don't have something with the time of death? I thought for sure the autopsy report would have it. Now, a blunt object may have lived a few minutes after being hit. The conversation. I Why is my badge here, man? That's what I want to know. The glass shards are going to be important at some point. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like I'd use the autopsy report to prove what I want, right? The, the floor plan doesn't do anything for me here. Um, nor does the wiretap, nor does the receipt. I don't think the clock is relevant, the glass shards aren't, the phone... Yeah, fuck it. Your honor, that statement contra- Okay, nope. All right, fuck. Hmm. That didn't go so well, yeah. Um, precisely the requested time, and I delivered the- Oh, maybe the delivery? You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It is an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with a, um, an embarrasser, sir. Embarrasser? Is that French for embrace? Or, or embrasser. Okay, I thought that was, I have no idea, dude. I don't know how to speak French. No shot. It's French for a kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. Uh, more a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe, perhaps, she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. That sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. That's no good. There's nothing there. Is... is that it? Tsk, t I don't know how to do... I can't, like, tisk tisk because my mic won't pick it up, so... You'll just have to fill that one in for yourselves, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Objection. Your honor, I must object. This charade of, oh my God, I can't even speak. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay, this is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Um, the room service? I don't think check-in matters. Bed making definitely doesn't matter. Does the check-in matter? Tell me again about uh, room service. Again, sir. At exactly nine o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. 
The guest had requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. Holy shit! I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes. Well, iced coffee for two, you know. And we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? And we don't skip on the ice as if that makes it more expensive. What did you say? Ah, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? Objection! I object. That was objectionable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, er, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, er, uh, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I was if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oh, bro, this would get you in so much trouble! Are you out of your mind? You fool! What a loser. <laughs> I've done it. I've won! Miss April Bay checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Look at the fucking records of the hotel! Did, did, did they, well, they might have checked in under Miss May, and I might not have put his name on record. Simple. It was the man with Miss May. Duh. The man who checked in with Miss May. Ugh. Your Honor, as, have been, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Start. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <sighs> yes, your honor. That is all today for the trial of Miss Fay. Court is adjourned. Let's go! <laughs> we did it! September 7th, 2.42 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby, number one. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. I will say, look, look, I threw a lot of shade. He is really cool. Look, like, come on, he's he's really cool. Look at him. I love when I love when he taps his his, his temple. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. Okay, well, it sends shivers up my spine. Hmm. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um. Well. No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it.
what happened to Miss May after that anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. The victim dodged an attack and ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. Okay, that's the only thing that was kept <laughs> from her entire testimony. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Aya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued. Damn, it's a two trialer. Yo, that's pretty cool. I am glad that they 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 recognize that hey, this is like we can't keep this trial going any longer. Um, but however, anyway, this is a great stopping point. We're segmented so perfectly. I love it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the officials for major and get the game for yourself if you want to do so. And if you made it this far with me, again, I really truly appreciate you being here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day or your night or whatever time it is. And I'll see you again next time. Good bye.